Hello folks and a massive welcome back to our Final Fantasy IX complete walkthrough slash let's play and once again I am your host Buzzfinger here to bring you through this next section of the story which is the Desert Palace so we're in this area known as Palace Rack and this can be a little bit of a confusing location so if you follow what I'm doing closely presuming you're playing along of course then hopefully we'll get, it, you know, get through it all together and make it out the other side with all the treasures and everything else that we want to get whilst we are here. So first things first of course, we're not going to be doing too much else in the room with the Moogles. We're going to head out. And now if we go over here to the other side, we can cross over and then just go up the stairs here. So pretty linear so far. And then we get our little introduction to the place, the Desert Palace. Right then, so first things first, we'll notice that there's this uh, kind of candlestick thing here and we need to go ahead and push that. We need to keep our eye out for these because they're part of the puzzle that takes place in this area and when we activate them we gain access to these kind of red flashy things which are known as bloodstones and it says on this description here that extract the power to nullify elemental properties from the ring. Basically, the way I understand this is that the more of these stones we collect, the weaker the boss will be that we're going to fight at the end of this dungeon. And each of these bloodstones represents a specific power uh, that the boss has. So if we miss them, and they are all optional by the way, uh, the more we miss, the harder he is. And there's no extra reward for defeating him uh, while the bloodstones are active, so we may as well just remove them. And we also get gear as well, which is another incentive for doing so. And I'll just see if this promised ring is any good to any of our party. Okay, so that gives us an item that Queena can use. And we're just going to head into the next area now. Once I've done this battle, of course. Once you come up the stairs into this next area, sorry I didn't record immediately, but literally just come up these stairs and head to the right here and you get a little bit of a growling sound and then this staircase spawns and we're going to head up that and all the way around here and we get another battle, have fun. And then we're up in the uh, top here, you can see little Ico. So once again we're going to activate the candle here. And the bloodstone isn't available in that same section, so we're going to run out and then run back down. And there should be a chest just here, which wasn't there before, so we're going to go ahead and grab the fairy earrings. And then we can head over to the left hand side and through the exit. And now we're in an area which should be known as Fire Chamber. And there's a few candles around here that we can light. These are a little bit different to the ones that we've already been using so far. But we'll go ahead and do all three. And this will open some extra doors for us. We can run through to the other side now, through this door. Right, so now that we're through here, we're going to do things in this order. We're going to light this candle, which removes the, two, uh, the set of statues on the side that we just came from. And if we head across there now, that will give us access to two candles here, which we're going to light. That removes those candles. We can then light these next two that we didn't light before. And then finally, with those candles all up here lit up now, we can light this bottom candle. And then with all candles in this room lit, that should activate the bloodstone just up ahead here. So, a little puzzle there. But this will extract magic from the chain. So we do want to go ahead and grab that. And we get an anklet for our trouble as well. And there's also a door opened up on the right hand side. 
Right, now in this next section, which is known as the hallway, um, we'll see a kind of uh, inactive bloodstone. But what we're actually looking for is a hidden candle, which can be a little bit tricky to find. But I believe this is it here. There we go. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And then this activates the bloodstone which removes the strength to resist. And that gives us some shield armor. And then we can just follow the path round. We'll be able to head upstairs here. And we'll try and just come around. So there's another candle we need to light. It's actually just that candle there that you need to light. And then you are able to move on to the next section. Okay, so in this library area, we can see a candle down here. We'll go ahead and light that little bad boy. And that brings up a staircase over to the right. And no surprise, we're going to head up there and light the next candle up at the top here. And that raises up this bookshelf. And now we're going to... Uh, I don't think we can do much in here yet, can we? Oh yeah. Uh, right then, so we can see this uh, bloodstone here. And by activating this one, or deactivating it depending on your perspective, we get the N-Kai armlet. So if you haven't already got one of those, you can give that to uh, Vivi here and teach him, I think it's water. We'll just check. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the Enkai Armlet teaches Vivi the water ability, which he already has uh, for me. So I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I'll keep him equipped with the Magic Armlet due to the boost in magical power. But water is a very powerful spell at least at this stage in the game, so I do recommend he goes ahead and equips that if he hasn't already. And once that's done, we're going to head to the middle bookcase here. And this activates yet another passage. And this should give us a couple more candles to light. One here. And if we head up, another one. Like her, there she is. And now we're going to head all the way back down. And here in the library, we're going to go ahead now and light the final candle that we can see at the moment in this room, which will open up the lower passage here. Another passage. And what was that sound then? Ah, right, yes. We've got a Moogle that we can save at. And we are definitely going to go ahead and do that, I think. One thing I wouldn't recommend is doing the mod net at this point because you probably have a coupon nut if you've been following my guide and you'll lose out on another coupon nut if you hand that in at this stage. But what we're going to do is just head over to this next screen here and the environments in this place are absolutely amazing really aren't they? Uh, and this room is called the Shadow Cham and it's basically uh, going to involve, you guessed it, some more candle puzzles. So. We're going to begin by lighting both candles in this section, this first room here. And that moves the camera there and back again. How exciting. And we're going to go ahead and extract the next bloodstone. So there's quite a few of these bloodstones. And that's a black hood, which should be useful for VB. Just have a quick look there. Where is it, Black Hood? There it is. Uh, gives him the death spell, so we'll definitely equip that so he can begin learning death. And 
then we're going to go ahead actually and extinguish this candle. And then we've got a passage here to take us to the other side. And here we have three candles, but we're not going to light this one here by the wall. Instead we're going to light both of these that are kind of next to each other. And that will activate the next bloodstone which we can then go ahead and extract. That will give us the Venetia shield. And we can now go ahead and light this next candle. And once again we can turn off this uh, left hand candle. That will actually activate a staircase for us. And before we go up to that staircase it's probably a prudent idea at this point to go ahead and save again. Since we've now solved that puzzle. Make sure you equip body temp at this stage on all four of your party members since the boss battle we're about to engage in does actually cast both heat and freeze. So if we run all the way up the stairs here we'll see this lone candle just sitting on its top at the top so we'll go ahead and activate it and we'll all stroll out nicely together or not as the case may be. This has activated the palace security system. This boss is known as Valia Pyra. He's a bit of a strange looking creature. But because we've collected all the bloodstones, he should be made, uh, made uh, a lot easier. And all this stuff that he would normally be able to do, he now can't do. He still has abilities, don't get me wrong, but the fight itself is actually more manageable. And he has 12,000 health, nothing to steal, which is good because we don't have a thief with us. Well, look at all these bloodstones we got. So he's weak to water, which means Vivi should start casting that water ability that we collected. Queena should begin by acting as uh, utility, so we'll cast Mighty Guard. And Ico here can um, cast Carbuncle, which um, should do some pretty good stuff as well. At least I don't think that uh, interrupts the Mighty Guard ability, but we'll find out. And then uh, see what the uh, sky has got. Sword Magic is what I meant to use. Uh, water. Be careful of this guy's reflect, so we don't want to be casting water with on him while he has the reflect ability equipped. But Ico is basically going to be our healer at this point. And with our party all nicely protected here. Should be able to do some pretty good damage to this guy. Steiner's going to be our biggest damage dealer here. Okay, the good thing with Carbon Court is that he just cuts reflect on our character so we can re-reflect our abilities back at him, which is obviously always a uh, good thing, because he has reflect on him, so yeah, pretty much how it works. But we are not taking much damage here with the uh, Carbuncle, which is pretty nice, although it has worn off now, so we'll recast it. just 
about it. So not a tricky battle because we managed to extract those bloodstones. So we'll say good night Vienna to that fella. We're going to approach the candle again. Well, I do recommend at this point, though, is just removing Ico's equipment. Uh, I mean, we can use that uh, on Dagger as well, so we will remove it. Go ahead and light the candle. And then we can see this light, shimmering light here, which is actually a teleporter. And then we get this scene back with Zidane. All we need to do is just move our, make our way through the linear dock the teleporter Right, and all we need to do now is head up these stairs and enjoy the scenes that we're going to be greeted with.
Okay, so we are requested to form a party. Uh, we'll just stick with what it gives us there. It doesn't really matter too much at this stage. And the only thing I would suggest is that somewhere around here there is a naming way card. And it's the second and only other place in the entire game now where we are able to collect this. So make sure you do it before you move on. And once that is done, we can basically return to the airship dock. So we'll go ahead and use the teleporter here. like Kujar beats us to the airship, but we have our trusty blue Narcissus to help us on our way. And once we leave this area, we will find ourselves aboard the said blue Narcissus immediately. Kujar's making his way to the Lost Continent here, which is basically going to be our next destination. And we find ourselves back in control of Zidane here on the world map with all party members except for Aiko which is why I recommended you only equip her of her gear. So we're going to finish off here today folks, thanks ever so much for joining me and we're going to crack on next time by doing a little bit of optional content including a new friendly creature and then we're going to go ahead and see exactly what it is that Kuja is up to. So do join me for that. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this episode, to just support me by hitting the like button. And subscribe to my YouTube channel to be kept up to date with future episodes. I've been your host, Fuzzfinger, and I'll see you soon for more Final Fantasy IX.